Um, okay, let's go ahead and get started. Welcome to Fall 2020. We're so thrilled that you were able to join our uh, Zoom meeting today. All right, before we get started, um, what we're going to ask everyone to do is to join us. And if you scan this QR code, it's going to take you to a website. And this website will help us all participate interactively. All right. So now we're going to go ahead and switch to the very next screen, which is how to use Zoom. Um, this may be your very first time Zooming. We're so glad that you're able to join us, that we've got some participants on here that are ready to uh, have the first day of the semester, albeit in a virtual world. Um, the very first thing that we're going to go over are going to be some tools. So as I talk about these tools, you'll see Brittany doing a couple of things. You can use Zoom a couple of different ways. If you get a link that says join directly from the link, you can join there or you can enter the meeting ID like you probably did to get here today. One thing that we like to do is to mute everybody um, when you enter this meeting. And we do that just to reduce the noise so there's not feedback but that doesn't mean that we don't want to hear what you're saying. If you have a question at any point, Brittany, what should folks do? Sorry, I didn't unmute myself. You should raise your hand. So uh, if you don't see this uh, screen pop up, I don't know if you're on your phone or maybe a computer, but if you click on uh, the place where it says participants, it's usually at the bottom. If you click there, it'll bring up, it actually on the computer brings up the chat and those selections. So it'll say uh, raise hand. So I can click it and then you can see on my video screen, it has a little hand up. <laughs> and then you click it again and it's gone. <laughs> So if you saw her do that, go ahead and give us a thumbs up. Brittany, show us how to do the thumbs up. Here's the thumbs up. You click on more and then you can do one of these. I don't think that one pops up on the screen, but if you look on participants, you can see my little thumbs up beside my name. <laughs> That's right. Okay, that's true. So that's what's going on. So I see it right there. All right. Um, and then the chat function, which we have been using already. Brittany, go ahead and tell us um, how we get to it. Yes. So again, just like where it says participants, there's another little button right next to it usually that says chat. If you click there, you can type a message just as I'm saying hello. Um, and you could send it to everybody in the chat so they can see it or if you needed to sell, tell somebody specifically there's a little drop down menu and you could actually select who you're speaking to so if you wanted to send a direct message to maybe adriana or myself you can do that by clicking the little down menu where it says to everyone Thank you. All right. So there is just some housekeeping kind of beginning the semester stuff. If Zoom is new to you, how you will navigate that is right in there. All right. So what we're going to do now is do some quick introductions. Um, my name is Adriana Broger, and I am the lead instructor for the radio and television department. I'm so excited to have you uh, here via Zoom. And what I can tell you is that um, this is a different semester for us, but you are not going at this by yourself. You have a lot of support and uh, you will hear about a number of that support um, later today throughout the presentation, but I'm glad you're here. And um, at the end of this, you'll see different ways that you can contact me. And so I look forward to hearing from you and getting to know you this semester. Um, I teach all the courses in RTV except for RTV 21. And I invited Mr. B, Mr. Bestelarides here today so that he could also um, introduce himself as part of the RTV uh, faculty team. So Mr. B, if you would, please unmute yourself and uh, just introduce yourself. Thanks, Adriana. So I teach RTV 21 and sometimes I teach humanities. I'm an adjunct professor at Delta College, and I'm also a filmmaker, and I'm currently making my first feature-length film right now. So for those in my class, you get to see that process and, behind, and a behind-the-scenes look at what we're doing. And I'm excited for another semester of Delta. Uh, I've been anxiously awaiting to teach the class, and I think it's gonna be a fun semester. Mr. B brings a lot to our department, so we're glad you could be here today. And next up is our amazing lab tech, Brittany Marquez. Hi, everyone. I'm Brittany Marquez. I am th the lab tech in RTV, so I'm your go-to person for any kind of uh, technical questions, uh, mainly equipment checkout questions. That's uh, 
basically the biggest role that I have here uh, during the semester. I, there's going to be a lot of that going on, but also if you have any kind of like Adobe Cloud questions, things like that, whether it's audio or video related, uh, you guys can always contact me via email and uh, and or direct message, Remind app, and things like that. We'll go over more of that later on in the, in the slides, but um, this is me. <laughs> Now what we want to do is go over to our Mentimeter and we want to hear from you. So what we want you to do is participate in this poll. Um, and so we're going to go ahead and do that now. So we want to ask you, how do you feel about this semester being online? Um, and you can choose one of these options and then we'll go to the next one. All right. So this is real time. See how this is fun, interactive. Uh, it looks like we are saying most of us are feeling it's going to be a struggle, but we're going to get through it. Um, and so it's really good to acknowledge that this is not normal <laughs> and that um, it's okay to live in that space where we say, you know what, this is going to be weird. Um, but, but then we, if we move forward in a sense of it's, it'll be okay because we're getting through it together, um, then that's helpful for us all. So I hope that we can see that. And I do see that a lot of you say, yes, this is safer and it's more convenient. Um, we recognize the pandemic is ongoing. And so we know some of you are essential workers or your caregivers, or for so many reasons, you cannot be on campus. Not to mention, of course, we want to minimize risk of COVID-19. And so it being safer for us to meet this way um, is a very good thing. Um, however, if you are conflicted and you also say, but I really want to be in the classroom, you're not alone. As you can see, there's some of us who really want to get into the classroom. Um, and some of you will, uh, you'll hear more about that as the presentation goes on. Um, but this is really great. So I'm so glad that you're all able to participate in this with us. Now, the next one still includes you. So let's move on to the next question. We want to know what words would you use to describe your feelings about school being mostly online? Please give us your words. And what, what this will do is the software is going to generate a word cloud for us so we can see um, how we're feeling about it. And I'm going to do the same thing. So let's take a few minutes to do this. All right. Oh, thank you for your words. Our word cloud is changing in real time. Yikes, that's a good word. <laughs> Whoever gave us that one. Convenient, safer, sad, sucks, frustrating, distracting, multitasking. So what we can, if you're not familiar with word clouds, if more than one of you have used the same word, that word will show up a little bit bigger. Um, and so it looks like a lot of us are saying it's convenient. Um, and that's definitely true. Um, and these are helpful because it kind of gives us a, a, a sense of how others are feeling. The bigger words that I'm seeing are convenient. Um, and certainly there's no drive time. Um, and so that is definitely helpful for us, but it's also frustrating, right? And so some of that frustration might be because of the technology um, and the lack of face-to-face -face contact that we often have in classes that require a lot of um, software and usually require a lot of collaborative work. Um, then I see um, we're kind of, all the other ones are just kind of evening out that, um, rough, alone. Alone is a really important word to feel because honestly, the reality is that in this dis distance education, we might feel a sense of isolation. And this is really important for us to do interactive things like this every single week so that we can check in with each other and make sure that we are all um, feeling like we're in this together. Okay, so um, because you might feel alone and because you might have a number of these different feelings, we want to let you know that you have a lot of help, okay? So let's talk about some of the, the help that you have available. Um, this semester, Delta College is starting out a little bit um, 
with some new pieces. So before we were in divisions, now we're in what we're calling tracks. And so the background that you see my background in, it's uh, the, our new track, Arts, Humanities, and Multimedia. And I have a video on my YouTube channel that tells you how you too can get a Delta College background. And I'll link that at the end. I'll show you how you can find that. Um, but what we want to let you know is that you are not alone. Your track has all kinds of help. Um, so folks that you can ask for help are me and Brittany. You can yes. Right, Brittany? <laughs> all the help. Mr. B is another person who can help you. Yeah. <laughs> there he is. Um, and then you also have success coaches. So you have success coaches um, and your success coaches for this semester. Um, Brittany, will you do me a favor and drop into the chat the link for success coaches? Coaches are James Forte and Rocio Ochoa. Okay, so now what we want to talk about is what does going back to our agenda, what does hybrid mean for fall 2020 in multimedia in radio and television? Okay, so some of our courses are hybrid. And if you are enrolled in RTV 11, 12, 13, or 31, then you are in, an, in a class that has listed as a hybrid class. So what you need to understand is that hybrid basically means this this semester that you only have to come to campus if you have prearranged communication to come to campus to either use a lab, to check out equipment, because you want to go over a one-on-one -on -one tutorial, because you're going to do in-class in um, um, mastery of a skill. Um, and this is really going to be the folks that are going to expect to spend more time in the labs are going to be RTV 13 people because you still have the obligation of running the radio station. Now, you will be able to run the radio station remotely using software, um, Team Viewer, in fact. And if you're in RTV 13, you'll learn more about those options. But the reality is that even those of you, if you're taking RTV 11 and your class is hybrid, please know that all of our class will be handled via Canvas online with the exception of the times that if and when you need to come to campus, we've got some space available for you. So you should not plan just to come to campus anytime and say, hey, I'm here for my lab. That's not how it's going to work. It needs to be prearranged so that I'm expecting you or Brittany's expecting you, and then we will meet you there. But it's not for you to come in as a drop-in basis, um, and there are going to be safety protocols that are in place that we'll get to later. Um, okay, then the majority of folks who are going to be in the RTV space running labs will be RTV 13 people. Um, now, you are not going to be there every day. You are going to be there uh, possibly one day a week. And those of you that are going to be doing your, the majority of your work from your online space, that is possible for you to pass the class. Um, but we also want to make sure that we give you that hybrid component so that you can show us mastery of certain skills that require you to have mastery if you're going to be working in a radio station. Um, okay, I hope that answers what is hybrid um, and what does the hybrid expectation look like. In RTV 21, 22, and 23, those are all online classes. Um, however, they're still going to be online, uh, excuse me, they're still going to be in-person equipment checkout available. And Brittany will go over that for all of us. Um, RTV1 is a lecture-only class. It is always a lecture-only class, so it will be conducted 100% online. There is no equipment in that class, so there is no reason for you to come to campus um, or to need anything unless you are going to need equipment in, in terms of um, a laptop or a hotspot that you are going to require. And in all of my course syllabus this semester, I have said the following, because we're a distance education setup 
it is expected that everyone have access to a laptop with reliable internet. I know some of you might be considering the possibility of doing this class using your phone only. However, that is not recommended because in our class, we are going to be using a lot of software. And the software that we're gonna use for editing is best used on a laptop or a desktop computer. And if you are enrolled in our class, you will have remote access to Adobe Creative Cloud um, paid through Delta College. So that will exist for you, but I need you to understand that from day one, I am telling you that you need to have a laptop or a desktop computer. In the instance that you don't have one, you need to let us know. So you should send me an email right away. If you're in Mr. B's class, let him know right away. You can always ask Brittany for help. Let her know right away. The reality is that we recognize that this pandemic is very difficult on all of us, but here's what we don't know. We don't know your personal situation. We don't know what you have access to and what you don't have access to. So we cannot be in a position to provide resources if we don't know that you need them. So please know that the very first day message is if you need something, you're going to have to let us know right away. And we will do our best to get you that equipment, whether it's letting you check out a laptop for the whole semester, um, getting you in touch with a success coach who can get you a, a hotspot so that you have reliable internet. Whatever your situation is, we have some resources to help you. But if we don't know what you need, then you cannot come to us midway through the semester or at the end and then tell us that you didn't have access and expect to be successful, okay? If you want to be successful in the class, there's an expectation that you're gonna make sure that you have the resources. Okay, um, next is lab hours and Brittany is going to talk to us about our lab hours. Okay. Hey, Josh. I just I'm seeing different faces. It's so great to see you guys. MK. Okay. Now I can't see your faces again. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, uh, for lab hours, you guys, I should probably change this right here. So these are the lab hour requirements. Um, you guys are required to fill out a lab hour form. It looks like this. It, it's linked in your guys's canvas. So if you don't know where to go, uh, Adriana, you said it was on the homepage, right, for them? It is on the homepage. Got it. So just really quick, uh, just so you guys are aware of the number of hours, uh, you do have to fill out that online form. That way we know. Um, and of course, you're probably like, well, how am I supposed to do lab hours if we don't go into the lab? Well, simple, uh, really lab hours, regardless whether we're on campus or not on campus, it's the same always. You guys can earn lab hours by watching <clears throat> YouTube videos, uh, movies, things like that. Anything that's related to, you know, RTV, whether it's audio or video, you guys can get lab hours that way. So for RTV 1, it, there's no lab hours required. Uh, RTV 11, you are required to complete uh, 121 hours. Same for RTV 12. Um, for RTV 22, it's 117 hours total. For 13 and 23, it's 209.5 total hours. And then again, for 31, it's 117 uh, total hours. And then Paul, I believe for you, it's 121, right? You want to yeah. give a thumbs up? Yeah. Okay. So really easy. Again, uh, Adriana will show you guys where this form is located, but it's super easy to fill out. You put your name, you put what class, uh, current month, date, total hours, and then what you did. So again, it could be, you know, YouTube videos. You could have read maybe a book or something or taken an online, you know, quick like workshop class or something or join so, us for our various workshops ex exactly <laughs> you can even watch our tutorials we make tutorials too so uh all, all of those this things is lab hour this yes is lab hour. exactly yeah so, um, and we will plan to have a number of different events so the way that i'm running things is because we have um, audio students and we have video students and some of you are, you know, kind of dual students. We will have an audio meeting once a week 
where um, I will have tutorials that I'm hosting like as part of my class. But in addition to that, Brittany also does a whole bunch of these as well. Um, and then Mr. B is hosting them. And so you are more than welcome to come to all of them. And this will be one great way that you can uh, have your um, lab hours met. Okay, I see some questions. Are you in the chat, Brittany? Yeah, I'm, I'm talking to them. So again, uh, RTV1 is online only, does not ever require lab hours. So uh, again, for those of you who maybe are getting a little bit confused, just know that we're giving out all kinds of information for all RTV classes. So uh, for RTV1, no lab hours. So don't stress out about it. <laughs> right. Okay. No Kiana, problem, guys. You have your hand raised. Kiana, you can go ahead and unmute yourself and ask your question. Okay, so I had a question on, so I'm taking RTV 21 and RTV 11, and both of them require the same amount of hours. So do I still need to do those separately or? Yes, yes okay. you do. Um, and okay. that's a great question, Kiana. For anybody who's taking multiple RTV classes, please know that the obligation is per RTV class. And that's why I don't recommend folks take a ton of classes that are RTV at once, unless you are going to eat, sleep, and breathe RTV and be editing all day, every day. Um, I will tell you, I have edited in the last week. Um, I uploaded like nine new videos. Um, I can easily tell you that that has been like a massive chunk of my life. Okay. <laughs> so, so edit, once you're into editing and you're into your planning, your pre-production, all of that, these hours, seven hours, friends, like that is going to, that's no problem <laughs> once you're in an RTV class and you're spending time with that. However, please know that if you are, if you owe a certain number of classes to Mr. B for RTV 21, you cannot double count those hours and the things that you did in that class for RTV 11. It, like there is an example there. And the reason is because these are two separate classes that require separate work. You need to make sure that you're doing seven hours worth of doing that, that work in his class and then an additional seven hours in my class. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense, Kiana. Yeah, it makes sense. Thank you. Okay, you're welcome. And this is three online tools that we think you really need to know about in order to be successful this semester at Delta College. If you don't know about these courses or these um, tools today, then I am concerned that you um, are not going to be in the best spot for this semester. So we want to make sure on day one that everybody understands the expectation is that you will know how to access Zoom that you will know how to access Canvas, and that you will know how to access um, Delta College's page of online tools. So today's quick tutorial is going to show you how to do that. And then following this, Brittany is gonna talk to us about our equipment checkout. So I'm gonna share my screen, and then I'm gonna show you Canvas. You'll see my Canvas classes. You'll see, um, Zoom, we're not going to do because we did that already at the very beginning of this meeting. So the next thing I'm going to do is show you the online tools at Delta College, um, show you how to check your Delta College email and how to get into my Delta. If you can do all of those things, then you are well positioned for this semester. So I know that some of you are returning students and this part might not necessarily be the most stimulating, but I guarantee you, you will learn a couple of new things because I have been delving deep into the processes of all of this and I've got new material this semester. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is um, start by seeing this page and hopefully you all can see this. Give me a thumbs up if you can. You can see deltacollege.edu's page of online tools. All right. It's also linked in the chat for you guys if you want to follow along. Yes. Thank you, Brittany. Brittany is sure to drop in all of the good links for us. Okay. So this page is absolutely critical. Like if you are new to Delta College and you say, how do I log into my classes? What is Canvas? I don't know what Canvas is. You need to know what Canvas is. So I'm glad you're here. Okay, so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna go through these, starting with um, Delta College email, Canvas login, and then the portal. So what I wanna explain to you is that Canvas 
once you're in Canvas, there's a messaging system that's different from your student email. Your student email looks different. And in fact, let me see, can I, I might show you that here. Let's go ahead and click here. And um, you are going to select student email login. And if you have never logged into your email before, then you need to know that there are instructions already for how to log in for the first time. So these are found here. It's going to be the portion of your email address before the at students.delta college. So whatever that portion is, that part is your login name. And then your password is going to be your birth date and then a capital S, capital J, lowercase d, lowercase c, the exclamation mark, and then your six digit birth date. So those things are case sensitive. So you're going to want to make sure if it's not working for you that you are um, paying attention to this information. Now, I do have a YouTube tutorial that I have created for you that goes through all of this. So I'm going to do it kind of quickly now, and then I will refer you back to that video or to any of the three of us for some additional help if you need that. Now, if you still can't log in, there is a space for troubleshooting and you can get some help from Delta College IT. So make sure though that you are using this guide here um, in order to address any frequently asked questions, okay? All right, so that takes care of how do you check into your Delta College email. Before I move on from Delta College email, I just want to say a couple of things. Delta College email is capped really small. I am not a fan of the fact that it can get filled up way too fast. So the reason that I like to let you know that is because if you don't check that Delta College email, chances are it will reach capacity and then you're not going to get any of the information that your instructors are sending you. So I recommend that you make a habit of checking your Delta College email at least once a day. Information is changing daily. Campus shut down last week and then they sent emails to you to let you know that. And campus is closed today. We might likely be closed for the rest of the week. In other words, there is important communication that may be changing day by day. And that's why I recommend you check your Delta College email every day. All right, the next one we're gonna look at is your Canvas information. So Canvas login. What we do now that I click on this is I'm going to my information. Yours may not look like this. Well, yours doesn't look like this because luckily you don't have to teach all these classes. <laughs> okay. Now, um, I am really thrilled that so many folks are already doing homework. So I, it looks like I've got four assignments to grade in RTV 11, a couple to grade in RTV 1. This is fantastic to see that there's so much going on already. Um, now, when you log in to the student view, you will see either the dashboard or recent activity. And I also have another video that goes over guidelines for Canvas. Today, I want to show you just a couple of things really quickly. Um, and I'm going to use any one of my classes. Uh, and don't worry if you log in and your course doesn't look like mine. I am always extra. So I always create graphics and stuff for my classes. If yours looks like that, that's because, you know, not everybody is with all the sauce. Let's go here. Um, so, oh, hold on. Before I go back, let me go back because I want to show you one thing. And in my video, in my tutorial video, I do go over this, but I want to just go back to just pay attention to these icons because if this is brand new or maybe you've been using this and you're just not sure, what I want to point out is that you'll see that some of these class cards have icons on them and some of them don't. So this like loudspeaker megaphone, that's announcements icon. And so if you have a class that has um, like some notifications there, that's going to be telling you that there's a, a recent announcement. And so you want to click on that so that you are aware of it. Um, and then this one here, this is... Uh, talking about what are the assignments. And so if there's an upcoming assignment, that one might have something there. And if you don't see that, don't worry about it. It's possible that your instructor just removed that as a view. So every instructor can set up their Canvas class differently. In my case, I 
um, hide a bunch of things that we don't even use in our class so that it doesn't jam up the space and confuse you. Um, and then this one here is discussions. Um, and then these are files. So let's go ahead now that we've explained that and let's go into RTV 11. Now my RTV 11 class looks very similar to what all of my classes look like. I have arranged my classes in a way that um, they are very, in my opinion, user friendly. So what I'm gonna do now is go into the student view so that you can view this. Okay, as we go into the student view, you can see that um, the, the view changes that instead of all of that list that I had previously, now what I have is just home announcements, discussion, grades. And then this is my home page. So I have a course description. Um, I have a link to my website that you can get to. I tell you what's going on, wellness resources. If you need to contact your success coach, if you need Canvas information. And then these links here, or these images, they actually link up to different things. So syllabus, this links directly to the syllabus. And that way you have a um, version you can scroll through here. And you can also download a copy to keep to your own files by clicking up here. Now, if we go back, the one that I really want you to see is, um, okay, so I organize my courses by using the modules. So if, uh, that's how I prefer. And you'll have different instructors who will build their classes according to whatever organization system they want. I have modules A, B, C. This is how I like to organize my classes. In my modules, let's just click on this so we can start this. I say start here because I want to make it so obvious where I want you to start. So I use language that I hope is, is helpful to you that says start here. These again, match the same icons we just went over. So these are gonna be, this is a page. If it's a page, there's probably, there's um, going to be text in there for you to read. If there's a link, it means there's, you can click on this. If there's a paper clip, it means there's an attachment here. So here I've got a PDF of the textbook we use in class. Here I've got links for us, student links. Here's a welcome. If I click on this, then I'm opening up this module. And then we go into one thing that I want you to see here is if you don't want to see all that, you're like, I've seen that already, then you can collapse these so that it doesn't bog down your view of um, Canvas. So I want this to be something that you can use. And then here, this takes us into week one. So week one, that's where we are now. I say, okay, here's our TV during COVID. I have videos for you. I say, listen, I want you to join my Remind class. And please know in all of my RTV classes, I do have Remind groups for all of my students. This is just another way um, that if, if we know that, for example, Canvas is down, Zoom is down, um, then we need to plan for alternative ways to connect with you. So just know that we have multiple ways to communicate with you. The next thing that we're going to look at now is going to be um, the grades tab. The grades tab is right here. Um, and I'm not going to click on it because there's nothing in there right now since I haven't graded anybody. But if you want to keep track, and I highly recommend that you do keep track of your grades and how you're doing, you'll be able to do that 100% using just clicking on this tab right here, um, right from the homepage. And then textbook, if you say, oh, where was that textbook that uh, Professor Broger had linked up. Well, don't worry, it's right on the home page. And then the other thing, right on the home page for all of my classes that require it, are your lab hours. So, right here, this you just click on this link, lab hours, and it will take you to the Google Form lab hour so that you don't have to say, Where was that? How can I get there? It's all right there. So I want you guys to know that I have given a lot of thought this summer to course design and I feel really good about where we are. Um, and so I just want you to know how I have my class set up. Um, I, it's not perfect, I'm only human. And to be honest with you, I do a lot of my work around two and three o'clock in the morning. So be patient if uh, something 
you know, is not published when I think it is. But by and large, I feel really good about all of the classes being launched. I will tell you that um, you might notice some dates changing this week and like me working in there or finishing up a lecture here and there. Um, I'm going to say some of my classes are complete um, from here to December, like at 100% today. And some of them are at about 90%. Um, so I am not fully, fully done, but I feel really, really good about, you know, all the 10 zillion classes that I'm teaching and where they are today. Okay. Um, all right. So hopefully that was helpful. Before I move into the next thing, are there any questions about Canvas that anybody has right now that you'd like me to see? Brittany, anything in the chat that's popping up that you want to talk about? Uh, yes. Uh, somebody just put, I'm still confused what we will be doing to complete labs. Do you want to answer that? Or you want me to answer? Sure. You, you can go ahead. Okay. So um, to, the, to the person who said that in the chat, um, labs, again, can be completed doing anything uh, that is related to your class. So if you're, um, you know, if you're in RTV 11, for example, if you're watching a YouTube tutorial on like Adobe Audition or something, you're learning how to edit, or you're, you know, in an After Effects tutorial, or if you read an article on something that's related to audio, that is considered lab hours. So however long you sat there, watched that video, or you read that article, or you joined one of our Zoom calls, that is what you would put as uh, your lab hour. I hope that clears it up. Does that make sense? Kiana, you can give a thumbs up or just say yes in the chat. So in addition to that, it's also going to be all the time that you spend reading your textbook, that you spend doing the assignments for class. So that's something that's like the big thing, right? Like, let's say you, I, I can tell you in RTV 11, you're going to have to do a liner coming up. You're going to have to do your My Five Songs. You're going to have to do a number of different things in addition to a collaborative uh, group project that you're doing in RTV 11 virtually. Um, and you are going to be able to count any time that you spend on that towards your lab hours as well. So I hope that also helps you understand that lab hours is anything that you're doing in our classes. Um, it's attending these things. It could be not even attending something for us, but maybe you want to attend um, Mustang Week, oh, which I think we didn't get to. No, okay, we passed over it. it. I'll go back to it. Um, anything that you attend from Delta College or in, and hey, let me also say this, it can also be non-Delta College related. And if you end up being one of those people who get a job like that, as long as it's related to what we're doing, that also is lab hour. So if you do internship or let's say you um, help out a local church or group run an audio setting or, you know, whatever it is, or maybe it's you're setting up a band whatever, all of that counts as lab hour. I hope that helps you to see that lab hour is very easy to accomplish. It's just going to be up to you to make sure you're keeping track of that. I hope that helps. Yeah, they said yes. Okay, good. <laughs> Any other questions you see in the chat that you think we need to answer before we move on? Yes, I'll just say Alex's because uh, it's a good question. Um, where can you find your lab hours that are needed in your classes in your syllabus? Yes. So uh, you, can, you can go into your syllabus for how many lab hours you need. Thank you. Um, in addition to that, we also, Brittany, can you um, take a screenshot of that image and the image that has all that stuff and just put it on kwdc.fm? Yes. Thank you. I think that'll be a very helpful thing for some folks too. Just that mm -hmm. way it's in all kinds of places. We can also do that as like a story today and folks can screenshot it. We're all about giving you all the info you need, folks. Yes. Okay. Let's go ahead now and go to um, the, okay, so that was our tour of Canvas. Hopefully that was helpful. Um, if there's anything that you need to know beyond that, then by all means, you can ask us um, at any time. The last one that I had for you, oh, let me, before I go here, let's go to My Delta. So the My Delta portal, this is really important um, because My Delta is going to be the place where you register for classes, where you can check your grades, where you can check to see um, 
basically financial aid information, um, any holds that you have on your account, like anything that you need to do that is related to Delta College, it's all going to happen from my Delta. Now, if I log in, and I'll log in right now, but obviously I'm faculty, so my logging in does not look like what yours does, but it kind of sort of does in some spaces, right? Because I have two sons who are at Delta. One is finishing up the semester and one is just starting. Um, so I know that you'll, you do have a class and course search, but you've got more cards than this, more tiles than this. And some of your tiles are... Um, the main thing is going to be manage my classes. Next time, I'm going to take a screenshot of what that looks like for my kids so that I can tell you. But I also want to let you know that Delta College has so many different videos for this, um, like in terms of how to use my Delta, that you should not feel like you're alone. So um, if you go to the um, page that we were just at, which was um, Delta College Online Tools, there is a whole lot of stuff for you here. So there are student guides to how to use your Delta email, Canvas login, and your Delta portal. So to recap, these are the three tools that we went over today. Today's tutorial was really focused on making sure that everybody is set up for success this semester by knowing how to log into Canvas, using my Delta, and checking your Delta College email. Oftentimes, we have a lot of our information as instructors that is in Canvas. It all lives online in the learning management software. Um, the problem with that is that sometimes you as a student can't access that right away. And so because of that, there's something in the world of academia right now called the wet syllabus or a syllabus that you can access outside of the learning management system. And so I took some time this summer to create this. And this is like a landing page for me, where if you're not yet in my classes, I kind of tell you everything that I think you need to know in addition. So this is my bit.ly. Um, and if you click here on this, it'll take you to a link that has all of my syllabi for all of my classes. And so again, this is designed, and when I show you this, I'm really talking to my folks who might be on a waiting list, so you don't have access to my Canvas today, but you are wondering, how can I look at the, the course syllabus? How can I get some information? How can I feel supported and not lose the enthusiasm for the semester? So I just really wanna make you aware that this exists, um, and I am sending this out to all of my classes. Um, as you can see, I also have different um, tools here. This one, like I said, is um, a tutorial for how to um, use online tools at Delta College. So this is basically what we just went over today. And if you're interested, you can go back and you can watch that. Um, now I've got 87 views. Oh my gosh, you guys, last semester I produced so many videos and they had like one view, two views. It was the most disheartening thing <laughs> to feel like I was making all this, these videos for nobody and nobody cared. So thank you for watching my videos this semester. Um, I did all of these like in the last week. This one is how to personalize your Zoom with an SJ Delta College background. Um, and so if you want to know how to get the Zoom background like I have today, I would recommend that you watch this. Um, and so you can subscribe to my channel. Um, also here, what I have is a link to how you can get the Delta College Zoom backgrounds. So our marketing department has done a really good job of showing um, that you, got, you can have school spirit even virtually. So again, I told you guys that I'm on my laptop that sounds like a lawnmower and it's 10,000 years old. So stand by as these images load. Um, you should see me try to use After Effects on this. I do, and it takes me all day but I get my new faculty computer uh, this week. So thanks for your patience. Anyway, what these are are different images that are available for you to use. Um, reasons that I love this is because there are so many times that in this pandemic life, um, your room might not be ready for folks to see it, right? Maybe um, you don't want people to see that you're in a room with people like, 
all around you. In my case, um, I'll tell you, I just had major surgery um, like two weeks ago and I did a ton of stuff using the Zoom background from my bed, but nobody, you know, you couldn't see my headboard, you couldn't see, you know, where I was. And so there are some benefits to using these kinds of tools because it allows you to um, maybe look a bit more professional, like you're ready for school, like you're ready to um, have this semester be successful. So a whole lot of these are available um, the one that I used is this one, and this is the Arts and Humanities and Multimedia. Uh, and if you are an RTV major, this is your track, but you can choose any one of them. You can switch them out. But if you're interested, um, I've got, again, all of these different videos with step-by-step. -step. There you go, Brittany. <laughs> I love it. All right. Good job. Okay, guys. So hopefully this tutorial of like all of the great tools that we have for you guys, I just want you to know that like, I feel so much more positive about where we are this fall than I did in the spring. Like I was done. I was tapped out. Um, I just, I was exhausted and I felt like we just, you know, it, what, we didn't have the time to plan. Um, and so I feel like coming back around at this virtual take um, 2.0, we are all more prepared as your guides to help you through this. So I hope this has been helpful. Um, if there are no more questions for me with this, these various tutorial components, I'm going to go ahead and go back to our PowerPoint so that Brittany can take us back to... Um, Mustang week. We're going to start there, Brittany. So Mustang week happens every semester, the first week of school. Um, let me bring up the thing here. I actually linked this for you guys in the chat. So if you want to click on it, you can see all of the really great virtual events that are happening. So obviously, normally this happens all in person, but it's all student associates uh, from the Office of Student Activities that puts this together. They host uh, these events, but they come together with other departments on campus. So whether it's um, faculty or staff or student clubs, they come together and do all this great stuff. One of which is uh, one of the clubs that we are connected with, which is Active Minds. So uh, I know that Adriana has lots of information for you guys uh, on Canvas in the wellness resources and things like that. So you could see that, but there's a lot of really cool events going on. Um, there's uh, your mental health matters, uh, LGBTQ Netflix party, there's a virtual Pictionary, so lots of really fun stuff. Again, you can use any one of these events even as lab hours, so I just want to throw that in there again for you guys. Um, but I won't spend too much time on this. Uh, the, the Mustang Week is really cool. It's a great way to kind of get you started in the semester. I know things are weird because we're all virtual, but you know, I, I think it's, it's going to be a lot of fun. I'm actually curious to see how the virtual Pictionary goes. I might join in on that one. <laughs> all right. So uh, this video you guys can watch on our YouTube. If you don't know, we have a YouTube. It's a, a DC TV on demand. If you look us up on there, you can subscribe to our channel and see a bunch of work that students do as well as videos that we do ourselves. Um, but let's go over this. Uh, can I actually share my screen? You guys can see my screen now, right? Cool. All right. So uh, here's how the equipment checkout process goes. This is our website. Let me actually, I'm going to put this in the, can I do that now? How do I get there? Um, Are you trying to put it in the chat? Yes, I can't I can right now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so link to the website will go in the chat right now. It's kwdc.fm. Very easy. This is what it looks like. It's pretty self-explanatory, lots of things in here. Um, I'm gonna take you guys here to student resources. So if you click here and then you click on RTV equipment list, it's gonna take us here. So you will need a password and the password is, it has changed. So if you knew it before, know that it's not the same. Um, all right, so that unlocks this page and now we're here. So if you click on this PDF, this looks new. It's actually easier to look at because it's shorter. 
So these are just the general rules on uh, equipment checkouts. And I, I've just put a few questions that I feel like you guys might have in general. So, and then if you have any other questions, you know, email me. Um, but really quickly, I just wanna say, this, I'll read off this top part really quick. Uh, all equipment checkouts are no contact pickups and returns. If you're picking up equipment from campus, you must always come to the back of RTV, which is Shima 145. I explained that in a video I actually did, which is on our YouTube, and it's posted on the RTV page that we came from. So um, never knock or try to open the door. Um, it's best that you either follow us on uh, Instagram to direct message me, or you could also, I have to change this, um, upload the the new one that we have but you could also call us so call us whatever's the easiest way for you guys to get in in contact with me to let me know that you have arrived because uh we don't want you guys to touching anything yeah, that's the whole point of the no contact um we sanitize everything before you guys get the equipment and we do it with gloves on so we're very very careful and safe about uh, the giving you guys the equipment um, the first thing that you have to do before you can even request any kind of equipment is clicking right here and it's going to take you to this page here. So this is if you've been in an RTV class before you're used to filling out the little contract thing that we have. This is the same thing. So it's just a checkout agreement form just saying that you understand that you are fully responsible for the equipment and the care, if it is lost, damaged, or stolen in any kind of way, you are responsible for replacing it. So you just fill it out here. It's all super simple. Again, you know, digital signature, uh, your phone number, you date it, address, RTV class, and all of that. So go back here. Once that is done, I will be able to see, so I will know for sure if you have filled out that form or not before you request equipment. So clicking here is going to take you guys to this so i'll um just take you to the next page so you can see it and there's this so again another really easy form to fill out you put your name your phone number um, i do recommend the email that you use for the equipment request can be the email that you check the most because i will email you guys a confirmation that i saw your request come in and um and just confirming the date and time. Sometimes uh, in the last semester, some people would accidentally put like the wrong time or the wrong date and then they show up and I'm not there. And I'm like, well, I emailed you. And then they say, I didn't get the email. So to avoid all of that, make sure you, you put the best contact phone number and the best email for you. It doesn't have to be your, your student uh, Delta email. So just wanna clarify on that. And then you list the items that you're requesting here. Uh, for the most part, I try to do checkouts between the times of 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. Monday through Friday, whether that's a pickup or return time. Um, it's just the time that works best. I do understand a lot of you might be working. So I'm very flexible. If there's a time that just if this time frame doesn't work for you, just let me know and we can work it out. Um, okay, let's go back to, there we go. Okay, so again, if all this information is like going over your head right now and you're like, I totally forgot what she said, you can watch this video and I explain everything in there and I do the same thing I'm doing right now, sharing my screen and showing you where to go for, uh, for everything that you need in order to check out equipment. Um, down here, this is something I actually just added, but uh, this is really the, the main bulk of equipment that we are going to check out to you guys. Anything below this part here is uh, everything that we actually have in our inventory for equipment, but will require uh, instructor approval. So the things down here don't necessarily be like, oh, I'm totally going to take the Red Raven home probably not going to happen there may not be a need for that so you know we have just kind of basic equipment that you guys can use at home um the length of time that you can keep the equipment really is uh, by you know however long it's going to take you to complete whatever set assignment so if for example if you're like oh, i need to record a uh, 
KWDC liner or something really quick, you know, and I probably only need it for like three days at the most. That's fine. You can do that. Um, the reason why we don't necessarily want you to keep like a camera for the full semester is because there might be other people that need them and we only have so many uh, cameras. We only have so many you know, uh, recording devices. Like you, you can see here in the parentheses, that's the quantity of, of that that we have. So that's how much we have available to you guys. Um, you know, we have uh, MacBook Pros as well. If you don't have a computer, uh, however, we're gonna tell you guys, you know, that going through Delta's process to get the Chromebooks is gonna be the best thing to do. Uh, the MacBook Pros, we really wanna kind of try to reserve for like the um, RTD 22, 23 students who might really need to use like Adobe Premiere just because it has uh, better RAM capabilities. So, you know, editing video is going to be a lot easier maybe than what you might have at home if you don't have a computer. So just things like that. Um, again, you know, the and if you click on it too, it's going to, oh, okay, it took us to a weird ad. Um, so if you click on it, it's going to take you to a video or like a manual or something that is going to show you how to use that equipment. We also have uh, some tutorials on on some of these like I actually just did one on the uh, Canon Vixia. So if you click on this, it'll show you what it is. Uh, I'm going to be uploading this tutorial today so that way you guys have access to that. And then um, again, you know, same same for all of these. If you click on it, it's going to show you what it looks like. It's going to give you specs and things like that. So there's that for you. Um, also, I want to show you guys this as well. So if you go here and then you go to tutorials, again, same password, lowercase s146. You have access to loads of tutorials here so these are you know audio related there's adobe premiere all all different kinds of uh tutorials radio dj adobe premiere uh, after effects ones uh, how to use a mixer you know a, our butterfly frame kit everything um uh professor roger has these as well so using Adobe Rush, that's the, the phone application for video editing. So really, really great resources here for you guys. You can also find this on our uh, YouTube channel. I could actually show you guys that really fast. So I'll just go here. And then here you can see we have all kinds of different videos and you can see different student work. So I don't know if um, like in Mr. B's class, maybe you're like, oh, I don't know how to do the Foley assignment. You can go to our YouTube channel and see how to do that. So I just, we have everything for you guys really. And I know this is all like a lot of information to take in at once, but I just wanna make sure that I show you guys where those things are, that way you're aware of it. I'm sure I'm going to have a lot of questions from you guys, but that's totally okay. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, Brittany. So basically, guys, what we wanted to do today, we wanted to keep our meeting to an hour and 30 minutes max, and we're at an, an hour 20. So I feel like we've covered a lot of ground in this time together. Um, Again, I know that some of you maybe are already coming back to Delta College, so you didn't necessarily need all the info, but we're so grateful that you uh, hung out with us today. So what we want to do now is just um, go to our very last slide, which is question and answer. Um, so let me go ahead and share my screen. All right. So what do you want to know? Is there anybody who has any questions? Anything at all? You can type it into the chat. You can ask us. Let's see. We see something there. How do I turn in assignments? Is so a question. You're going to turn in your assignments via Canvas. That's why Canvas is the tool to know about. So anything that you need to do in terms of finding out like today, what our goal was today is this was a plan to give you an overview of all of the various things that are going on in 
within radio and television at Delta College. Um, but specifically for each one of your classes, you're going to go to Canvas. Remember when we did that via online tools, log in, and then you'll see which assignments you have to do and you can turn them in directly there. So I hope that makes sense to you there, Tani. Um, Emilio says, do we have a schedule to check if there will be any more Zoom meetings? So it depends what class you're in. Emilio, um, if you are in RTV 11, RTV 11 currently has um, a, a list of from here to December, all of the different days that we are meeting. So yeah, so here's the thing. I do have that. So go ahead. I see that um, somebody, L. Arias, has that same thing. And he says, in RTV 11, there are no Zoom meetings for the class, right? So that's not necessarily true. What I will tell you, RTV 11 has everything you need to know within Canvas. And then I also have a message that I sent out to you all via announcements. So I would suggest that you go into Canvas. One thing I didn't show you there, and I realize that now, although it is in my video, um, is I want you to enable notifications so that when your instructor sends you an announcement, that comes to you as a notification so you can open that right away. Um, in that class, I am holding Zoom meetings. And right now they're scheduled for every Thursday at 1 p.m. I also sent you guys a message that I have a doodle poll out there. And what a doodle poll is, is just trying to find the best time that works for everyone. So here's what I'll tell you, Emilio and um, L Arias and anyone else who's in any of the classes, that you should check with me on the on within Canvas for the exact day and time that we are meeting. My other thing that I want you all to know is that I like to say, hey, I'm having a Zoom meeting. Here's the day and time. And in RTV 11 or all of my classes, the Zoom meeting ID will not change for the semester. So once you see that meeting ID, it's going to be the same meeting ID every time we meet at once, once a week. And you can join us if you're able to. And if you're not able to, there is no penalty. So it will be recorded just like this one. It's going to be recorded and uploaded later for viewing. So I hope that helps you see that we're really trying to have flexibility for you. Um, and I hope that answers your question, Emilio. Paul says he's doing the same with RTV21. No, you have not missed out on any class meeting. So I am holding my class. I'm holding time once a week. And if you can join us, great. If you cannot join us, there is no penalty because we know that you may have to work. Maybe you're an essential worker. Maybe you have children at home or you're a caretaker or there can be a number of reasons you can't make our class. That's understood. So you can watch it later. Emilio, what class are you in? Um, if you're in RTV 11, please check the announcements because I've sent you guys the meeting ID already. And I also say that right now I have that scheduled for every Thursday at one o'clock. And that's gonna be for every audio class. I, sh I shouldn't just say 11. It's gonna be 11, 12, and 13. Um, now, if, the, if everybody says to me, you know what, Broger, that, that doesn't work for me. I would like to meet later or at this time. I'm gonna do my best to try to find the time that meets for everyone. For RTV1, Emilio, sure. So the, um, in terms of RTV1, I'm hoping to have our meetings on Tuesdays at one o'clock. And so I hope that that works for people in RTV1. If it doesn't, um, same doodle poll kind of information. Um, and that announcement actually has not gone out yet today, Emilio. So you will see that come through um, within the next hour. I'm going to send out the meeting ID and all of that information to you all. So we really appreciate you taking time to join us for today's meeting. Um, the last slide. So these are our digital cards. Um, there up top is Brittany Marquez. And then I am below that. Um, you can feel free to take a picture of that digital card. Um, you can screenshot that if you want and make sure that you know how to contact us.
You can find everything on the announcements of what of the pre-recorded lectures to watch. You can see what homework to do or what to read. And then it, also in the announcements area, you will find that we're going to meet Friday at 8 p.m. I've noticed over the summer that a lot of students like meeting in the evenings. So, um, but if that, if, if a lot of you guys want that changed, I'm totally flexible. So I'll write that in the chat as well. So we'll send this information out as well, um, but please know that we are eager to support you. And I hope that today has been helpful and answered some questions for you all. Thank you so much for joining us.